Let's talk about why you should be adjusting your tire pressure when driving off-road and some of the best tools for the job. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Today we're talking about airing up and airing down the tires of your vehicle when driving off-road. Now this is a pretty beginner entry-level topic. However, it is a question that I get asked quite a lot in videos when you guys see me airing down and airing up the tires of either my Tacoma or my Sprinter van. So first and foremost, what are the benefits of airing down your tires when driving off-road? Number one, the most obvious thing for most people is for better traction. Lower tire pressure increases the contact area of the tire with the ground, improving traction and reducing the risk of getting stuck. And this goes for a lot of different environments, like snowy, muddy environments like I'm in right now, and even some like sandy and rocky environments. Number two, simply for a smoother ride. When off-roading on rough terrain, deflating your tires can help absorb bumps and just provide a smoother ride overall. Number three, increased flexibility of your tires. Lowering your pressures allows your tire to flex and conform to whatever terrain you're driving over. This enables the vehicle to navigate obstacles a lot easier and a lot safer at the same time. And number four, a reduced risk of damage. When you lower your tire pressure, you are getting a smoother ride and increased flexibility out of your tires. And both of those things combined help reduce damage to your vehicle. Deflating your tires not only reduces the risk of damaging your tires and getting like a puncture in your sidewall, but it also reduces the risk of damage to your suspension and other body components. A smoother ride means less stress on all of the components on your truck or vehicle and just makes it a lot more enjoyable. And number five, this is one that most people don't really think of because it sounds counterintuitive, but improved fuel economy. Lowering the tire pressure can improve fuel efficiency when driving off-road because it reduces the rolling resistance and it allows your vehicle to move more easily over obstacles and rough terrain. Now, if you've ever been off-road with full tires, you will know that you will use a lot of throttle inputs to get over some obstacles. If you don't have great traction, maybe you are spinning your tires, trying to get unstuck. So, like I said, it sounds counterintuitive, but when you lower the pressure in your tires, you can actually see benefits for fuel economy. When you're off-roading, who really cares about that? But hey, it is kind of a perk. So now some of the common questions that I get asked specifically about my setup and how I use my vehicles. Generally, when we're talking about the Tacoma, I'm running my tires, which are 35 inch tires. These are Toyo Open Country Mud Terrains, 35 by 12 and a half on 17 inch wheels. On the road, I'm typically running about 35 PSI in these tires. Of course, when the tires heat up, they will expand and your pressure will go up. And then when it comes to off-road situations, most situations when I'm going off-road and I do know the trail, I'll generally run my tires from about 18 down to maybe 15 PSI. That is enough to give you a lot of those benefits that we just talked about, however, if you're going onto a trail that you know is going to be super rocky and you definitely need more traction, then with a wheel setup like mine, which is not a beadlock wheel, I'll typically go even a little bit lower from about 15 PSI down to roughly 12. I generally don't like to go any lower than 12 or maybe 10 PSI without a beadlock on there because the lower you run your pressure and the more rough terrain you're driving over, there's a higher chance of you actually popping that tire off of the bead. If you run beadlocks, you could run these things down to almost zero. A lot of people will run them down to like five PSI which is pretty damn extreme. With how I use my vehicles, I don't run beadlocks on any of them, and I get by just fine going down to roughly 18 to maybe 12 at the lowest PSI. Now, over the years, you guys have seen me use a bunch of different tools to air down and air back up my tires, so let's talk about a few of those. One of the cheapest, easiest, but also one of the slower ways to do this is simply with a rock a stick or your car keys. You simply push down on the valve, let out as much air as you want, and then of course you will need a tire gauge to check what pressure you are at. You don't need to buy anything fancy, you can literally just pick up a rock off the ground and air down your tires like that. Now the second way, if we're talking about actual tools, right here I have these little screw-on tire deflators. These happen to be coming from Running For Tacos, and you may have seen me use these on my van like years ago. 
Now the way these work are a little bit finicky to set up, but once they are set up, you should not have to adjust them. Essentially, you put it on the Schrader valve of your tire and then it will just automatically start deflating. If they are set to your desired PSI, then once it gets to that PSI, the air will slowly stop coming out and then it will get to a point where you're at your desired PSI, you can throw your caps on and go. Now these things are great, kind of like set it and forget it tools. You can put them on all four tires at once and then go around the vehicle again and take them off once they complete airing down to your desired pressure. The reason I don't really care for these though is because as it gets closer to your desired PSI, it ends up taking a while. I think actually airing down your tires with a key or a rock sometimes can be a little bit faster than these. However, if you want to be accurate, you can set all of these up to your desired PSI and get the job done without really thinking about it. Next up, we have a system like this right here. This is coming from ARB, who you will be hearing about a few more times throughout this video. This is an air system with a digital gauge on here, and essentially the way this thing works is you screw it onto your Schrader valve and actually pull out the stem. That way it deflates a lot faster than just simply pressing on it with those screw-on tire deflators or a rock or a key. The only downside to this is that you have to go around to each tire, kind of bending down and doing this individually which is okay, but it's not going to be as efficient as some of the other options that we are going to talk about. Having a tool like this to remove and also replace stems is actually very handy when you're out on the trail, so this is definitely good in my book. Now for the way that I actually like airing down, as you guys can probably tell from my last couple of videos, right here I have a system from Faster Fleet. This is a four hose system with a digital manifold on here so I can connect it to all of my tires at the same time, flip a valve and air down to my desired pressure. I can then close the valve, all of the tires will equalize and be exactly the same pressure and this is my absolute favorite way to air down and also you can use this to air back up. It's quick, easy, painless, all of these are actually made in the USA and I have a discount code for them so if you guys are interested in checking out this method of airing down, I'll leave a link in the description down below. You guys have seen me use this in some videos in the past so I'm not going to dive too deep into this but this is my preferred method, one of the fastest but not the actual fastest. Now the absolute fastest way to air down your tires is going to be with some more hardware like these Apex valves right here. I do not have these installed right now, however, if I do end up changing out my wheels and tires at some point, I probably will in the future, I will install these valves and airing down is almost too fast. You simply pull up on the valve, it will deflate insanely fast, and then you click it back close once you are at your desired pressure. Now one of the only downsides to a system like this is they are very fast, and if you do not have something like a digital gauge hooked up to it, you could go lower than your desired pressure. But once you get the feel for it, it could be like maybe five seconds, you just hit it, count to five, pop it back on, and then you're aired down and ready to hit the trails. So now you've aired down, you've had a lot of fun on the trail, you're safe and comfortable, you're not destroying your vehicle because your tire pressure is low and you have good traction. Now you get back to the road. You gotta air up. If you have ever driven with your tires aired down on the road, you will know that it gets very sketchy. It kind of feels like you're riding on marshmallows or clouds. In a pinch, you can kind of like get to a gas station to use an air fill nozzle. However, most people who are into off-roading like this will have tools with them to do it right at the trailhead. I can't stress this enough. Do not drive fast when you have low air pressure in your tires. So now for one of the most simple options. Right here I have a 12 volt compressor. I don't even know where I got this, Astro AI. Might have bought it on Amazon. These things work. I'm not gonna say they work great for a normal vehicle with a smaller size tire. These things will work fine. There are a ton of companies out there who make things like this. And in a pinch, this will get you by. You simply plug it into a 12 volt socket in your truck and then connect this to your valve. And then you kind of sit there and wait until it gets to your desired PSI. It will turn itself off and then you move to the next tire. These are definitely great. It will get you by in a pinch for basically any kind of tire pressure issue that you may run into on the road. This is actually a good idea to keep in most vehicles. And then we can move on to something a little bit fancier like this right here. I believe I showed you guys this specific pump in a video before. This is coming from a company called Fantic and it's electronic with a battery pack built in. So you set your desired PSI, hook it up to your tire, press start, and it will inflate your tires up to your desired PSI and then turn off. Now this thing surprisingly works pretty well. I would say this works better than a car socket pump. However, if you are doing four 35 inch tires, which require a lot of air going from 12 PSI back up to 35, 
This thing will take a while and eventually it will die, probably after one use if you do have big tires. I find myself using this for bicycles and all of my motorcycles because it does the job very quickly and accurately, has the PSI gauge and everything built right in here. So this is a really good option if you have smaller tires, but of course we're talking about larger vehicles and off-road. So what are some other options out there? Now this is not something that I currently have with me, but outside of a 12 volt car socket pump, you can also opt for one that connects directly to your battery terminals. This kind of unit is typically a lot more powerful than the little car socket ones, and you simply connect it to your terminals, it's a larger compressor, and you can hook up a multi-hose system to these to do all of your tires at once. So it's kind of a win-win there. The only downside is that it's going to take up room and storage space inside of your vehicle, and it's something that you have to bring out, connect, and set up every single time you want to use it. So that's why I've never used one of those personally in the past. Now we're moving on to my preferred method, one of the fastest methods, and that of course is utilizing onboard air systems. The only one that I can really speak to and recommend are the ARB systems. They have a single compressor system and a dual compressor system. I personally run the twin setup in both my Sprinter van and on this truck right here. This does require a little bit of electrical work. It will take up some space depending on where you have it mounted, and of course you do have to run air lines to connect whatever air up system you're using. But I guarantee you if you are airing down and airing up while going on trails this is going to be one of the most convenient and also fastest methods out there so for my ARB twin setup, I simply connect a hose. In my case, I am still using the faster flate system. I can connect the manifold to my system, connect the hoses to all four tires at once, and then air everything up at the same time. Again, closing that valve to equalize all the tires, and this is how I am still using the system today. Now, just because that is a system that I use does not mean that it is the fastest way to do it. You could also opt for something like a power tank. Now these power tanks or any other similar product out there is essentially a giant CO2 canister which you can hook up whatever hose system you may have. So if you are using something like my preferred method of the faster flate, I can connect the faster flate to the power tank and air up all the tires with CO2 power very quickly. I've personally never used one. I think it's something that I would like to try in the future. Again, this is going to be an item in your vehicle that is going to take up a little bit of space and you do have to refill it after a couple of uses depending on your tire size and how much air you are actually using. So something like the apex valves in the power tank is the fastest way to get your tires to go down and back up in PSI. However, one of the faster and more efficient ways to do it, in my opinion, is an ARB twin compressor with a faster flate system to air down and air back up. I think that's all that I got. So if you guys have any questions on airing down or airing up your tires for off-road use, let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoy these off-road tips and tricks, let me know what topic you may want to see me cover next and maybe I can do that in a future video. So that is all that I had for today. If you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every single week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.